In my previous two gear videos, we went over the best gear you can get in the early game, but there's no getting around the fact that the early game weapons and outfits are pretty weak, and you'll really start to notice this as you begin to encounter new and tougher machines in the Forbidden West. So of course, you're going to want to upgrade your gear pretty soon after leaving the Dawn, but with a lot of options and each one of them requiring various resources to upgrade, it can be tough to figure out what equipment you should be buying. And I think this is especially tough for a mid-game build, because you know you're going to be moving on to something better eventually, so you really don't want to feel like you're wasting your shards and resources sources on some blue weapon or outfit that you might not use for very long. But you guys are in luck, because I've done a pretty exhaustive evaluation of all the mid-game gear, and we're going to cover all the best options and my recommendations in this video. So let's get right into it. Let's start with your outfit. Now if you guys watched my recommended early game gear upgrades video, then you know I recommended picking up the Nora Sentinel outfit as soon as you can. As I mentioned in that video, the Nora Sentinel is my top pick for a mid-game outfit. In Forbidden West, just like in Zero Dawn, outfits vary by their resistance stats to various types of damage, but I would argue the bigger differentiating factor in Forbidden West is actually the skill perks outfits now give you. I like the Nora Sentinel because you get a boost for the Concentration and Stamina regen skills. Concentration and Stamina are essential parts of combat that you'll be using all the time, regardless of what weapon types you prefer. The outfit also boosts the Stealth Range Plus skill, which increases damage to enemies that are unaware of you, so basically that means your opening shot will deal more damage. Boosting all three of these skills is really nice, and that's the main reason the Nora Sentinel is my top outfit recommendation for the mid game, but it also has good melee and range resistance once fully upgraded, as well as decent resistance for fire and shock. Now it can be a bit difficult to upgrade because it requires Claw Strider and Spike Snout components, so you'll want to create jobs for getting those components and make it a point to upgrade the Nora Sentinel to get its full benefits. As with pretty much any outfit, I'd recommend putting at least one melee defense weave on it to boost that stat, and I'd go ahead and put two on if you have them. Now I do want to give you guys a couple of alternate outfits for different playstyles. My runner-up is the Karja Shadow, which you can buy as soon as you get to Plainsong. The Karja Shadow has very high melee resistance for a blue rarity outfit, with this stat going all the way up to 40 when full upgraded. Its skill perks are focused on healing and defense, so this can be a good outfit if you find yourself taking a lot of damage or running out of medicinal berries often. Like the Nora Sentinel, it also requires Claw Strider components to upgrade along with Long Ling and Snap Maw components, so you'll want to create jobs here as well to make sure you get the outfit upgraded quickly. Now if you're more of a stealth fighter, which I know many of you are, I would recommend the Utaru Harvester. This outfit gives boosts for low profile and stealth range plus to reduce your visibility to enemies and make it easier to deal damage from a stealthy position. It also boosts the Weapon Stamina Plus skill, which will allow you to use weapon techniques more often. It also has decent melee and impact resistance, and as an added bonus, it's fairly easy to upgrade given that it only requires Sky Drifter, Bristleback, and Lancehorn components, which are easier machines to take down. Okay, let's move on to your Hunter Bow. As you guys know, the default Hunter Bow is very weak, even when fully upgraded, and it gets very frustrating pretty quickly as you start to go up against tougher machines. An upgraded Hunter Bow is one of the first things you're going to want, and hands down, my top pick for this is the Sun Touched Hunter Bow. I really like this bow for a few reasons, and I'll tell you guys right now, you can use this even into the late game, so it's worth the investment. First off, it works similarly to a Hunter Bow from Zero Dawn, so there's a familiarity factor to it. What I mean by that is it has the same ammo types you're used to on a Hunter Bow, regular and hardpoint arrows, which are now called Hunter Arrows and Advanced Hunter Arrows, and it has Fire Arrows just like a Zero Dawn Hunter Bow did. With its perks for critical hit chance and critical hit damage, it's also basically the strongest blue rarity Hunter Bow you can get, so it's a pretty clear choice here. Definitely pick up the Sun Touch Hunter Bow as soon as you can. The earliest location you can buy this is in Plainsong, but you can also find it in Scalding Spear. Moving on to our next weapon, we want to start building out our arsenal of elemental ammo types, and I always prefer to do this with bows instead of other weapons for two reasons. First, arrows are the cheapest ammo in the game, using just shards, ridgewood, and green rarity elemental resources to craft, so you'll pretty much never be hamstrung by running out of rarer resources like glass paste and metal bones. And second, elemental arrows allow you to hit corresponding canisters on machines to trigger elemental explosions, which is a powerful and important combat tactic. For example, hitting a blaze canister on a fire bristleback with a fire arrow. So, our next bow is going to be the Frost Hunter Bow, which gives us access to both frost and acid arrows. Both of these elemental damage types are important in Forbidden West. You'll use the Frost Hunter Bow all the time, both to hit freeze and acid canisters, as well as build up the poison and frozen states by hitting machines directly. Both of those states make it easier to deal damage to many machines. I would recommend loading this bow up with your best frost coils to boost that stat as far as you can. In my opinion, freeze is more important than acid. The earliest location you can buy the Frost Hunter Bow is at the Hunter Merchant along the path you follow during the Death's Door main quest, but you can also buy it in Plainsong a bit later. Up next, we're going to pick up the Purge Water Hunter Bow to add Purge Water arrows to our elemental lineup. Now Purge Water is a new elemental damage type, but it works just like all the others you're familiar with like Frost and Fire. 
Certain machines are weak to purge water and you'll want to either build up what's called the drench state by hitting them enough with purge water arrows, or if they have one, you'll be able to hit a purge water canister to trigger an elemental explosion. For example, snap moths have this canister on their neck. The Purge Water Hunter Bow is your best option for dealing Purge Water damage for quite a while through the mid game, so you'll definitely want to have this bow in your loadout. Now it also gives you access to Acid Arrows, which is a bit redundant since we already have Acid Arrows on our Frost Hunter Bow, but if you want to, you can make the Purge Water Hunter Bow primarily an Acid Bow by loading it up with Acid Coils, while your Frost Hunter Bow is loaded up with Freeze Coils. This is actually what I did since I found myself running into machines weak to Acid more often than machines weak to Purge Water. Plus, you'll still be able to trigger Purge Water explosions by hitting those canisters even if you don't buff the purge water damage stat. So in my opinion, acid coils are the best way to mod the purge water hunter bow. You can pick up this bow in the Tanakh settlement of Scalding Spear. Switching gears to a different weapon category, we're definitely going to want an upgraded sharp shot bow. Luckily, we'll be able to get one for free simply by moving forward with the main storyline. Without spoiling any major plot points, once you gain access to your base, I would recommend going with the lowest level choice so you can begin the Broken Sky quest. Early in this quest, you'll be given the Cleaving Sharp Shot Bow, which is actually a pretty nice bow that I recommend you upgrade and hang on to for a while. Now, of course, the direct and tear damage stats on the regular precision arrows are upgraded over the green Sharp Shot Bow, but in my opinion, the much bigger benefit it is that this bow gives you access to tear blast arrows, or I guess I should say tear precision arrows, as they've been renamed for some reason. But don't be fooled, these are totally exactly what tear blast arrows were in Zero Dawn, and you can see right away that even without upgrading the cleaving sharp shot bow, the tear damage on these is already 265, which is way more than any other bow you can get at this point. These tear arrows are super useful for knocking off machine components to disable certain attacks and deal damage. Not to mention, you'll definitely want to use these to tear off components needed for weapon and outfit upgrades. For example, Claw Strider Tails, which are needed for a lot of gear upgrades and can be tough to knock off using regular arrows. And what's great is you don't have to buy this bow at all since it's given to you during the Broken Sky quest. The only investment you need to make is upgrading it to make the precision and terror arrows even better, which you should totally do. Like I said, you'll be hanging on to this bow for a while. Okay, so we've picked an outfit and loaded up four of our six weapon slots, and honestly, these four bows are the most important weapons for the mid game. Just like in my early game recommended gear video, the final two slots are a bit of a wild card, but I do have some suggestions for you guys. First, you may have noticed that we don't currently have a weapon to deal shock damage. Now this is actually one of my biggest frustrations with the early and mid game. In my opinion, there really aren't any solid options for a shock weapon, which is a problem because shock is a really useful elemental damage type. Honestly, the first good shock weapon you can get is the Lightning Hunter Bow, which you can get by completing the Need to Know side quest. We'll talk more about that bow in my mid game recommended upgrades video, but you're probably going to want some kind of shock weapon earlier than that. So let's look at a few options. If you're on a budget, you can stick with the green warrior bow that you can pick up for free from the Dawn Hunting Grounds. To learn more about that, go ahead and watch my early game gear upgrades video. But in my opinion, a warrior bow isn't great for shock because you have to get really close to a machine to hit a shock canister, which could make it difficult to aim, not to mention dangerous, or you have to use a lot of shock arrows to build up the shock state directly. But if you don't have the resources to buy something better, then keeping the shock warrior bow in your loadout for a little longer isn't a bad idea. You also have the free Tripcaster Thirdless gave you during the main storyline, so that's another budget option, but a Tripcaster won't allow you to hit a shock canister to trigger a shock explosion. For a slight upgrade, if you do like warrior bows for elemental damage, you could buy the Acid Warrior Bow in Plainsong, but again, it's still a warrior bow, so it's still tough to hit those canisters or build up the shock state quickly. Perhaps the best option is a Shock Bolt Blaster, which you can find in Scalding Spear. Personally, I don't really like Bolt Blasters because the ammo is fairly expensive and your mobility is reduced while using them, but you can build up the shock state pretty quickly with it, and you can also hit shock canisters to trigger explosions. So you might want to use this as a holdover until you can get a proper shock bow. That being said, what I actually did on my first playthrough was use the free shock warrior bow in combination with the green rope caster, which you can pick up in Baron Light. Basically, I would use the rope caster to tie a machine down, for example a long leg, and then while it's immobilized, you can easily hit a shock canister even with the inaccurate warrior bow. The rope caster also comes in handy for other machines that show up in packs, like scroungers, scrappers, and especially especially those pesky leap lashers. You might want to consider having a rope caster in your 5th or 6th weapon slot to deal with machines like these, which can overwhelm you with their numbers early on. The green rope caster is a good cheap option. If you want an upgraded version, I'd recommend the anchor rope caster, which can also fire shock ropes and purge water canister harpoons. You can pick this one up at Scalding Spear. Now the shock ropes aren't amazing, but it does give you an opportunity to play with the canister harpoons, which can be a good way to apply an elemental effect to a machine. If you end up liking those, then you can grab the canister rope caster from the plane 
Song Hunting Grounds or at the Bulwark, which will let you attach shock, freeze, and fire canisters to a machine that you can explode with an elemental arrow of the same type. Another option for your last two weapon slots could be a Shredder Gauntlet. Now the blue Shredder Gauntlets aren't great, but the purple and gold ones are actually very strong when used correctly, so you might want to start practicing with this new weapon type now. If you're interested in that, I'd recommend picking up the Iron Eater Shredder Gauntlet in Scalding Spear or at the Bulwark. This one will let you play with acid and piercing shredders to see how you like doing elemental and tear damage with a shredder gauntlet. If you do like using it, then I'd recommend picking up the triple shredder skill as soon as you can so you can triple the damage by launching three shredders at once. If you like blastlings, then the best one at this point is the siege blastling, which can also be found in scalding spear. Alternatively, if you want to start playing with adhesive bombs, then I'd recommend doing the old growth errand, which you can pick up in plain song. You'll be rewarded with the adhesive blastling, which can launch both adhesive and regular explosive bombs. Now, if bolt blasters are your thing, then you could use the shock bolt blaster I mentioned before, which also fires regular bolts for dealing damage, or you might be interested in the plasma bolt blaster, which would allow you to start playing with plasma damage and gives you access to stronger advanced bolts for dealing more direct damage. Just keep in mind that if you do start using a bolt blaster, the ammo costs metal bones to craft, which can be hard to keep stocked up on, so you'll probably have to use your bolt blaster sparingly. Finally, if you like the new spike thrower weapon, then you could pick up the bellow blast version at the bulwark. Or, if you want to take an early trip deeper into the west, my top recommendation would actually be the Heart Shatter Spike Thrower, which you can get for free by opening a chest located near the Stand of Sentinel's Tall Neck. Okay guys, those are all my recommendations for a mid-game loadout. I know that was a lot of options, but I hope I've given you some guidance on which gear is worth your consideration. Remember, the Nora Sentinel and the four bows I recommended form the core of the loadout. Those last two weapon slots are really for you to experiment with and figure out what weapons fit best with your playstyle. But with the outfit and four bows, you'll be able to handle pretty much anything until the late game. Now of course, this isn't an endgame loadout by any means, and in fact, you'll want to make at least a few more upgrades before you get to the endgame. So make sure you keep an eye out for my mid-game gear upgrades video coming out very soon. After that, we'll take a look at late game and end game loadouts to finish off the series. I'd also love to hear what gear you guys think is best for the mid game, so totally leave me a comment about that down below. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you soon in the next video.